Do you pronounce it I love you or I will have you without armor cats breaker or I will not have you at all? By the way, the reason that I look so dead right now is because this is the first thing that I'm doing as soon as I woke up. I finished Six of Crows last night and... Okay, listen. After watching Shadow and Bone Netflix, like... I was so pent up, like I needed to reread Six of Crows because Kanej just like has my whole entire being. Um, This video is just gonna be like however minutes long of just Kanej being superior. I can't talk about this anymore. I'm literally gonna go through this chapter by chapter, part by part. Okay, let's start with part one, shadow business. We start chapter one in Juiced, Joust, what's his name, point of view. When I was rereading this, I had money on my mind. I just kept thinking about the Six of Crows adaptation. I can't wait to see this opening scene adapted. Like, I'm gonna throw hands if this is not the opening scene of episode one. And like, I can just see the part where Anya, that Grisha girl, saves the boy and she's like, don't look. And then to the guard, she's like, pick up the knife. Can you say iconic opening scene? Beautiful introduction to the Jirna Param storyline. And then chapter two is from Inej's point of view. This is like my favorite chapter. Opening line, iconic, Kaz Brecker didn't need a reason. I love that we're introduced to Kaz's character through Inej's point of view, like that whole opening monologue. This is like the scene where they're confronting Gilles and his crew in like a parley, parlay. It says Kaz's eyes found Inej unerringly in the crowd. So then parlay is about to begin and then Jesper is the one who first initiates the first no mourners. Oh my gosh, no mourners, no funeral! The biggest joke of all time in this entire book is the fact that Kaz is 17 years old. In fact, everybody here are babies, they're so young and I... I just like really choose to ignore that. Okay, and then we have the reveal that Kaz knew about Giel bribing the guards. And then the second big reveal that Kaz knew that Big Bolliger betrayed them. And then there's a third reveal that Kaz is 510 steps ahead of everybody here, knowing the address to Giel's girl and threatening him. He said triple tier cake on that one. And it's just the perfect introduction to his character. You already know like he's so formidable straight from the get-go. Also, when Kaz is talking to Giles about Giles's girl. He says, she finds you charming, sure sign of madness if you ask me, but love is strange that way. This love is strange that way, Kaz. This opening scene is just perfection. Kaz cocks his head to the side and says, you're from the suburbs, aren't you? Came to the city to try your luck. Well, I'm the kind of bastard they only manufacture in the barrel. I just love that line and how it's such a lie. <laughs> and then the scene ends with Inej having a voice inside her head saying, help, Bolliger. But instead, she spoke a quick prayer in the language of her saints. The wraith didn't have time for traitors. I think it's a perfect introduction to Inej's character too, because you can see the way that she is empathetic and she is kind, but she is also ruthless and extremely loyal to the dregs. Like she does not have time for traitors. Like, okay, queen. Like Okay, and then chapter three is from Kaz's point of view and then it says he knew Inej was shadowing him I don't know just the way that Kaz always knows that Inej is there even though she's silent can you say soulmates? Kaz reveals that Gyoza's girl was never in danger and Inej is like you were bluffing then she was never in danger she's always trying to wring little bits of decency from him and then he says when everyone knows you're a monster you needn't waste time doing every monstrous thing Inej like always wants to paint Kaz to be a better man than he is. And then throughout the book, you kind of see her understanding that that's not good enough for her. But then like by the end, Kaz really does turn into a better man because of Inej, like. <laughs> also, this is when Van X says, a decapital painting of mine was stolen six months ago. In episode one of Shadow and Bone, in the opening scene with the dregs in Ketterdam, Roddy tells Kaz that someone stole a decapital oil painting last night from a merchant's house. So we have that little Easter egg. The thing is that this is supposed to happen six months ago in the book, but in the TV show, I'm pretty sure Six of Crows takes place like many, many years after. Moving right on to chapter four from Inej's point of view. It says Inej is just only two years out of the brothels, not even 17 years old. Like I said, everybody here is so young. Oh, and this is when we see that her menagerie tattoo is like very scarred and like mangled. In the show, her menagerie tattoo is still intact in there. I'm hoping that we see that happen before the Six of Crows season, like see her getting her menagerie tattoo off. Okay, and then she meets up with Kaz in the slot. He says, Rojak, and she says, gone. And then he says, he put up much of a fight. And then she says, nothing I couldn't handle. And then he says, not what I asked. Not what I asked, like he wants to know if like Inej was 
and he heard a nudge like you can say that I'm reading too much into this, like I know that I am. And then this is when he talks about the job to Inej. She is the first person that he tells about the job. He grinned at her, his smile sudden and jarring as a thunderclap. His eyes the near black of bitter coffee. We'll be kings and queens, Inej. Kings and queens. This line has to be adapted. Cass stripped out of his vest and shirt. She wasn't sure if she was flattered or insulted, that he didn't seem to give a second thought to her presence. Do you think Kaz knew what he was doing? Like, uh, or is he really just oblivious? And then he takes off his gloves. He only ever removed them in these chambers, and as far as she knew, only in front of her. He just keeps talking about the job. He's like, oh, it could be a few weeks, maybe a month. He said as he ran the wet cloth under his arms and the hard points of his chest, water trickling down his torso. For saint's sake, Inej thought as her cheeks heated. What would Cass say if she suddenly stripped down and started washing herself in front of him? He'd probably tell me not to drip on his desk, she thought with a scowl. <laughs> oh, I just love him so much. I just love that in the beginning, we see from Inej's chapters that she obviously feels some kind of way about Kaz, but we're like so in the dark about Kaz's perspective, right? Slowly throughout the length of this book we get more and more insights about his side and like the payoff is just we're really just like okay Kaz doesn't care about anyone except for himself and the job but then we learn that that's not true that he was bamboozling us this whole time then he tells Inej that he got jumped right by Van Eck and then he says it won't happen again he promised and I'm like okay Okay, promising? Kaz really would only feel the need to promise something like this to Inej, you know what I mean? Because he doesn't need to prove anything to anyone else. And then this chapter ends with the iconic, oh, and put an order for a new hat. And Inej is like, please, please, my darling Inej, treasure of my heart, won't you do me the honor of acquiring me a new hat? That line has to be in the adaptation. I think we can all agree. Chapter five from Kaz's point of view. This is when we first have him stay brick by brick. And like, hear me out, I'm picturing a whole episode titled Brick by Brick. And I'm picturing this episode to be one episode solely about Kaz's backstory. If you're feeling it. Kaz goes to Nina to ask for her help. And then the crew goes to Hellgate to break out Matthias. Then they end up swapping Mutzen, Muzzin, Musin with Matthias. And Nina, since she's a heart render, has to replicate all of Matthias' injuries onto Muzzin. And let me just say, Muzzin is the MVP here. None of this entire heist would ever have been able to happen if Muzzin was not here. And then part two, Servant and Lever. And this is chapter from Matthias's point of view. The iconic opening line, Matthias was dreaming again, dreaming of her. And they're on the boat getting ready to GTFO. Matthias is like looking at Inej and he's like, he could knock her into the water without losing his footing or doing her any real harm. And I'm like, sir, you thought? Because he does try that and Inej just a simple side, just a simple sidestep. And she's like, not today. And then Wylan is finally introduced. This is Wylan, best demolitions expert in the barrel. And I just realized on a second rewatch of Shadow and Bone season one, when Jesper and Kaz are talking, Jesper's always asking for a demolitions expert. And I'm like, Lee Bardugo is such a big brain. She's giving us so much candy, like she's feeding us so well. Because listen, honey, Jesper, you're gonna get a demolitions expert. And then we have the age reveal here that Matthias is 18, suspected that he was the oldest of the bunch. What am I doing with my life? If I'm not breaking out people from Hellgate, like what am I doing? And then chapter eight, Jesper's chapter. Right from the get-go, Jesper keeps picking on Wylan. Jesper shook his head, played piano too. Flute, said Wylan defensively, perfect. I just felt so attacked because your girl plays piano and flute. There is a specific breed of people who learned the piano as their first instrument and then picked up flute in high school. Then Kaz finally spills the tea about this heist that they're gonna do and Kaz is like, this can be done and we're the ones to do it. Jesper felt the mood shift in the room as possibility took hold. I can already hear, I can already hear the score slapping so hard oh my gosh and it's going to like zoom in on Kaz's face like on his scheming face like I can already picture it hire me as the exec producer chapter 9 Kaz says to Wylan you can keep an eye on Jesper Kaz coming in clutch as the wingman here though because they'll really keep an eye on each other and then chapter 10 from Inej's point of view Inej says to Kaz Matthias isn't the only irreplaceable member of this crew Kaz you need me and then Kaz says I need your skills Inej that's not the same thing you may be the best spider crawling around the barrel but you're not the only one he is just angry internally about the fact that he knows that 
and Nej wants to leave. He's just this little boy who can't control his feelings. He's just like panicked. This book is really just like 300 pages of Kaz insisting that he doesn't need Inej and that she is replaceable. Like, okay, Abby Lee Miller. Like, and then we have a flashback to Inej's parents. Inej's father says, many boys will bring you flowers, but someday you'll meet a boy who will learn your favorite flower and your favorite song, your favorite sweet. And even if he is too poor to give you any of them, it won't matter because he will have taken the time to know you as no one else does. Only that boy earns your heart. I will see your flowers and I will raise you one ship. I just can't. And here we also see her dagger, one of her blades, she named Sancta Alina. I know that that is the dagger that Alina gives to Inej in the last like episode. And then finally, they're about to set off on their heist and they all gather in Fifth Harbor and Inej comes and she sees Kaz and it says, he looked like a dock worker or a boy setting sail on his first adventure. It was almost as if she were peering through a lens at some other more pleasant reality. This part really just got me because like in an alternate reality, like in some other universe, in another lifetime, like this could have been it. They could have just been a dock worker and a girl. Like if they didn't each have their demons and they weren't both subject to the trauma that they endured in the barrel, like this could have been another lifetime. Like Chapter 11 from Jasper's point of view. So this is when their ship explodes because someone routed them out. Kaz is like head east to the next dock, born at birth 22. And Jasper's like, what's at birth 22? And Kaz is like, the real Fairland, which is the name of the ship. Every time, every time. And then they all get separated. And of course, Jasper is with Wyland. This is when Wyland is about to like go off and drop his flash bomb. Jasper says to Wyland, like, what do you want? And then Wyland is like, close your eyes. And then Jasper says, you can't kiss me from down there, Wyland. Oh my gosh, Jasper? you little flirt. And Wyland drops the flash bomb, right? And then Jesper says, not bad for a merger's kid. This is the moment that Jesper fell in love with Wyland and you can't change my mind. Chapter 12, Inej's chapter. She's like very horribly injured and then Kaz comes to the rest. I can't even talk about this part. Inej gets stabbed, bundled her into his arms and leaped down from the crates. I can't be here right now. And she asks, did we win? And then he says, I'm here, aren't I? Please, we need to preserve all of the dialogue in this scene. It has to make it to screen, okay? Just do do this thing and then make it into the script talk to me Wraith <laughs> then she says you came back for me and then he says I protect my investments which oh I can do this she says say you're sorry and he says for what and she says just say it Chapter 14, from Nina's point of view, Nina thought of the look on his face when he set Inej down on the table. He was the same Kaz, cold, rude, impossible. But beneath all that anger, she thought she'd seen something else too. Or maybe she was just a romantic. Literally me, like, through reading this book, I'm just like, no, there's something else here. I like that meme of that guy with the cigarette. And then we have Jesper visiting Inej, and he's like, she can't die, not this way. <sighs> I just love Jesper and Inej interaction. I think that they're camaraderie and her friendship is just so wonderful. We got a lot of that in the TV show actually and I enjoyed it so 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 much. Chapter 16 from Inej's point of view. I love, I can't wait to see the Nina and Inej friendship. Like probably one of my favorite relationships in this entire series. When Nina says like, you should have seen the look on Kaz's face when he brought you to me. Inej says, I'm a very valuable investment. Nina's jaw dropped. Tell me he didn't say that. And then Inej says, of course he did. Well, not the valuable part. And Nina says, idiot. I'm like, yeah. And then this is when Inej is telling Nina about why she doesn't have the Drex tattoo. Kaz told me that it was my choice and that he wouldn't be the one to mark me again. Honestly, Loki, just like the decent thing to do. I don't know, from Kaz, like anything that you get out of him. It says, feeling anything for Kaz Brecker was the worst kind of foolishness. She knew that. But he'd been the one to rescue her, to see her potential. He'd bet on her and that meant something, even if he'd done it for his own selfish reasons. And chapter 17, Jesper's chapter. Jesper checked on Inej every morning and every night. <sighs> love. We love that. And then we have Nina saying to Inej, like, okay, okay, when we're back in Ketterdam, take me out for waffles. I just love that waffle detail being in the show too, when she is like to Matthias, let's have some waffles. And Matthias is like, what are waffles? And she's like, I can't wait to introduce you to my truest love. Chapter 18, Cass. This is, oh, 
I can't even. I'm gonna. I'm actually so tired and so sleepy. But this is the scene that I told myself I had to get through before I put this book down for the night. It's the scene where Kaz approaches Inej finally after she, you know, recovers. So he tells her like that she has to climb six stories up the incinerator. And she's like, you know that I can do it, Kaz. And you know that I'm not going to refuse, so why ask? And then in the italics, you know that it's you know that it's real when when Lee comes in with the italics because I've been looking for an excuse to talk to you for two days. Ugh. I feel like it's the first time that we see something solid from Kaz's end. This was the receipt. We get it. You love Inej. Oh my gosh, and they're like sitting next to each other like Inej talks about if their ship is intercepted, they'll have no way out of Jerholm. And then Kaz is like, I'll get us out. You know that. And then the italics Kaz thinks to himself, Tell me you know that. He needed her to say it. He needed to know she believed in him. This is when he's gonna talk about Jordy. Because Inej says like, when you go after other gangs, it's business, but with Pekka Rollins, it's personal. It says later he wasn't sure why he did it. He'd never told anyone, never spoken the words aloud, but now Kaz kept his eyes on the sails above them and said, Pekka Rollins killed my brother. He turned his head. They were sitting close together, their shoulders nearly touching. Even the idea of being this near someone should have set his skin crawling. Instead, he thought, what happens if I move closer? So after he says, I don't want your prayers, and Nesh is like, what do you want then? And then the old answers came easily to mind. Money, vengeance, Jordy's voice in my head silenced forever. But a different reply roared to life inside him, loud, insistent, and unwelcome. You, Inej, you. I've already been filming for like over an hour. This is gonna have me split up into two videos. I do not have the memory capacity for this. This is where I, I'm going to stop and we'll pick this up later.